What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at both silicone and PVC through the lens of sportswear design. If you've ever been interested in both of these materials for your upcoming sportswear collection and have wondered what the right choice is for your brand, this video is going to go in depth on each of the two materials. We'll be providing the comparisons and the contrast between both, and I'll give you the ultimate verdict on which is the right choice for you. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. As we always do in these videos, we'll try to understand the main differences and similarities between PVC and silicone by understanding what PVC and silicone really are, especially at their base. PVC is a plastic-based material that's based on polyvinyl chloride, whereas silicone is a rubber-based material that's based on silicone dioxide. And as we'll come to see when it comes to the differences, a lot of those chemical, physical, and tactile differences can be attributed towards their different natures. Before we get into the main differences between both PVC and silicone, it's probably important to understand why the two materials are so commonly confused together. And that has to do a lot with their similarities. Visually, they're extremely tough to tell apart. They both have this muted plastic-like look, which can almost be confused for an eraser or some sort of rubber gummy. When it comes to their environmental impact, again, not saying that they're completely sustainable, but they both have somewhat of a kind effect on the environment in the sense that they're less damaging than other types of materials that are available on the market for similar uses. Both materials are pliable. That means that they can be heated up or they can be extruded as paste to pretty much create any shape, form, or texture that you want. Because of that, both PVC and silicone lend themselves to a wide range of applications and design uses. It's also important to note that given their chemical nature, they're both also entirely waterproof, which makes them great for use on all kinds of sportswear where you need that waterproof nature. Anyone who's used a jacket that is meant to be waterproof, but notices that some of the trims or accessories are not waterproof, you'll know that a chain is only as weak as its weakest link. And that's the same case here. If you're gonna have a garment that's intended to be used in certain conditions, you wanna make sure that the types of accessories and trims match that functionality. So the major benefit of both PVC and silicone is that they are waterproof and they can be put into those conditions, whether being used in swimwear, sportswear, or other types of apparel that you're going to have waterproof or a water resistant need. Silicone and PVC also have great color fastness. That means that they retain the vibrancy of their colors long-term. Under direct sunlight, both are extremely resistant towards fade, and that's gonna lend them much needed durability, especially when it comes to vibrant and bright colors in your designs. It's no use creating a PVC or a silicone label if over time it's going to lose that vibrancy and end up making the garment look worn out or cheap. And that's a major benefit of both PVC and silicone that they share. Their color fastness is on point and you retain their colors long-term because of their chemical structure. And that's a great plus. When it comes to applying these materials onto garments, both can be either applied using top stitches or Velcro backs. What that allows them to do is it allows you the flexibility to place your PVC or silicone labels pretty much anywhere you want on a garment within reason. And we'll discuss in the differences section why I say within reason, because there is a slight difference on the flexibility of that use, but when it comes to applying them, there are a decent range of methods that one can look at. So now that we've discussed these similarities, it's important to look at the differences. These differences are gonna help you guys make the right decision for your brand. I'm gonna go ahead and say this, both PVC and silicone are great options and they lend themselves to a wide range of uses. We personally use PVC in our designs and we use silicone, and ultimately it depends on the use case scenario as to which option we're gonna go with. The biggest elephant in the room and one we definitely need to consider is cost. 
Generally, PVC is almost half the price of silicone on a square inch per square inch basis. Obviously, that rule of thumb differs between manufacturers, but PVC is generally cheaper to produce because of the availability or the wider availability of the raw resources needed to make PVC labels. One major difference is that I've personally noticed, and this is something that lends itself to the physical structure of both PVC and silicone, is that silicone has the ability to stretch, whereas PVC has virtually no stretch whatsoever. If you've ever held these garments or these accessories or trims in your hands, you'll be able to tell instantly. PVC is harder and it's less pliable versus silicone, which is going to be a lot more compliant. This is key when considering the types of garments that you're going to be applying both of these labels onto. If you have a fabric that needs to stretch, chances are PVC is not the right choice. That mismatch in tension is going to lead to rips. So don't be using PVC in areas where you need to have high stretch or a high amount of tension over time. Silicone is going to be the right choice and ultimately silicone is a much better decision when it comes to garments requiring flexibility and movement. PVC on the other hand, while not so useful on items like leggings or lightweight tank tops, is much more beneficial on items like heavyweight joggers or hoodies, where you're going to have a thickness of fabric that's going to be able to resist the, let's just say the lack of stretch that's afforded by PVC. So you could save a couple of bucks there by using PVC labels instead of silicone labels as opposed to investing that type of money into a silicone label into a garment that essentially does not need the stretch or has the type of fabric that can handle the rigidity of PVC labels. We briefly mentioned and touched on the environmental impact of either silicone or PVC and though I mentioned that they're not horrible for the environment they're also not the best. But when it comes to silicone, it does edge out the competition in that sense. It's slightly less worse for the environment than PVC. But in my opinion, in my experience, they're not the most sustainable or eco-friendly materials to consider when you're looking at accessories and trims. You may want to look at recycled materials like recycled pulps or rubbers or latexes that are recycled versus freshly made or synthesized PVC or silicone materials. At the same time, if you're going to have any of these hardwares or trims rubbing up against the skin, I would definitely recommend silicone over PVC. It just happens to have a smoother finish and it is less harsh on the skin than PVC. Heat resistance is a major area of difference between both PVC and silicone. PVC can only withstand heats of up to 45 to 50 degrees before the material starts to melt and starts to deform which actually limits your options in terms of how you can transfer that material onto a garment. Whereas silicone has a much higher range. It's around 200 to 250 depending on the type of silicone that you're using. And ultimately that means that you can use a heat adhesive on the back of silicone, which actually allows you to heat transfer print silicone labels. So most 3D logos that you see out in the market that are applied using a heat or a heat sealed back is or they're going to be made out of silicone because PVC simply is not an option in that case. If you're using a heat press on PVC, you're going to melt right through the material by the time you've finished applying it. So unfortunately, this is an area where if you need to have heat transfer prints that are made out of some sort of extruded material that has a texture, honestly, silicone is going to be your only option and you're going to have to pay a slight premium for it. PVC is going to be a much better choice for patches and those types of garment accessories. So do consider your end use and consider your application methods. If you're going to be a brand that is trying to cut costs, PVC is a great option to do it in certain areas without sacrificing much quality and the flexibility to create wild and crazy designs. But if you need certain application methods like heat transfer printing, PVC is not going to be an option. Ultimately, if you're going to create prints, go with silicone. If you're going to create patches, be conscious of where you're going to have these patches because like we mentioned, if you're creating a PVC patch, that's a great option. But if you're putting it onto a garment where you need certain flexibilities, for example, you're creating an extruded patch that's going to go on your side hem. Do bear in mind that a silicone patch that you're going to top stitch down onto the garment is still going to allow the garment to be folded in half a lot more flexibly and easily than a PVC patch of the same size and dimensions. So PVC, again, though a great option and a much better value 
then silicone is limiting and it's something that you do have to consider. What's my end use? How am I applying it? And where am I applying it onto the garment? If you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys feel like you have a better idea of both silicone and PVC, please consider smashing a thumbs up. If you have any questions on the topic, let us know what they are. We'd love to answer them. We always love engaging with you guys. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know which topics you want to see and we'll try to get to them when we can. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.